Today on Beers TV, these LED sliders affect coral coloration in a multitude of ways that most of us are completely overlooking. It's time to get the best coloration from our corals and even entire tank. All that's coming up. Hey, this is Ryan with Beers TV's Master Reef Tank Lighting Mini Series, Set It and Forget It Lighting Tools for Perfecting Coral Coloration, Growth and Health. This is episode four, Spectrum Two. Last week we tuned our LEDs for energy production needs of the corals, but equally weighted is the tank and corals need to look awesome, so today we dive deep into how Spectrum relates to coral coloration and effectively master that as well. By the end of today, you're gonna to know how to use LED lighting to highlight a coral's natural coloration and pigments to their best. Second, how to highlight the coral's fluorescence, which is totally different than that natural pigmentation. How to use light to promote the formation of new fluorescent color pigments and color morphs. How to keep and maintain that awesome coloration the coral had at the store that you bought it from. And a handful of other elements which can promote coral coloration. All tools to realize that tank full of the most colorful corals out there. All this based on an enormous amount of time testing lights with Randy, the Beerus team's experience with our own tanks, tens of thousands of reefers we talked to, advice from the propagation facilities we worked with, combined with the information that I found in over 20 of Dana Riddle's articles, Maxim presentations, and even some time that he shared with me on a call for this specific video. I'll do my best to capture as much of this as best I can, as accurately as I can, but if you want the finer details of Dana Riddle's articles in particular, check out reefs.com. In the magazine tab, you'll find 114 of Dana's articles, dozens on coral coloration and lighting. You'll quickly realize that many of the questions that we asked today, he answered over a decade ago and what the pros have been doing for just as long. Coral coloration is effectively just three things, fluorescent proteins, non-fluorescent proteins, and then photosynthetic color pigments or proteins. More specifically, how these three things combine with specific wavelengths of light to create what our eyes see. Starting with fluorescent proteins, these are those proteins that absorb a certain wavelength or color of light and then emit it at a totally different wavelength. For example, when we light a reef tank with royal blue LEDs with a 450 nanometer peak, clearly very blue light, most of the tank will look blue because of that. However, you can see many corals will absorb that light and then re-emit it in a totally different wavelength or color with a red, orange, yellow, or green glow back at our eyes. Basically, any coral that glows under near UV, violet, royal blue, or blue LED channels from our reef tank lighting is demonstrating fluorescence. I think it's fair to say that most of us would like to maximize that fluorescence in our tanks because it tends to produce some of the most stunning colors in our tanks. So how do we do that? It's not as simple as just throwing some royal blue LEDs on the tank and calling it a day. That's because as I mentioned already, fluorescence is a protein absorbing a very specific wavelength of light and then re-emitting it as another color. The input color absolutely affects the output color. In fact, even a subtle shift may result in almost no fluorescence. I have some examples of that on the E170 we set up as part of the WWC Hybrid Series. I temporarily put the Radeon G5 blue on it for this episode just because it has the most discrete color channels or wavelengths of light of any of the light modules we have here at BRS. Starting with the UV channel, which has a 404 nanometer peak, but goes all the way down to 380. This is a deep violet color for the entire tank, but you can also see the corals fluorescing a metallic orange, red, green, teal, blue, and the growth margins of some corals have a very obvious deep violet color. Now comparing the UV against the violet channel with a peak of 424, this is actually very close to the same peak as many of the Atinic T5 lamps out there. Some of the greens now really coming out, some of that fluorescence shifting from green to teal, and the growth margins now a very obvious violet color. However, you might also notice that the violet channel just doesn't do as well with some of the yellows on these specific corals, and even the oranges change fluorescence pretty dramatically. So that shift of just 20 nanometers from 404 to 424, very noticeable with some specific corals in these tanks. Now looking at that royal blue channel, in this case with a peak at 446, this is the channel where the tank's greens and teal colors get super bright, and you can start to see that red fluorescence in many corals, likely why you see some of the oranges come back as well. However, just under that single 446 royal blue peak, the yellow fluorescence in some of the corals is nearly gone. Now looking at the blue channel, which is 475, lighter blue to me, it looks a little bit teal in color. However, the first thing you'll notice immediately is now the near sun-kissed orange fluorescence coming out. Even corals that previously didn't show any orange fluorescence at all. 
Again, just a change of 30 nanometers to a lighter blue dramatically changes the way that corals fluoresce, both bringing out those oranges, but you can also see the greens are losing that pop under this light as well. Okay, so here's where it actually starts to get interesting. What happens when we combine the 470 blue peak and the 446 royal blue peak together? Maybe I want both orange and green fluorescence at the same time? And the answer is exactly that. You get the best of both worlds. We essentially combine the best fluorescence from each light source, and you can see even some of the mixed fluorescence for something totally brand new. But this is where this all comes together. When we turn on just that cool white channel, you can see the tank is fairly drab, mostly shades of pale brown, yellow, and blue. But what happens when we crank up all eight channels within the radion blue and add in all the different fluorescence from the different channel peaks? Some of the corals you can barely see now coming out with pinks, the best of the oranges, the teals looking awesome, purple is obvious, greens popping like you'd expect, and even seeing that yellow fluorescence as well. All at the same time, this is why all these channels are important and the value that broad blue spectrum approach is so valuable to maximizing the coloration of all the corals in the tank. It's easy to see why coral fluorescence is not about a specific channel, color, or approach to lighting, but how they all combine together to a collective goal. I'll even go as far to say if a light source is missing ranges of UV, violet, blue, or they're only available at very low intensity, you just won't get all of that fluorescence. Those colors are simply not available to you. So while that thin royal blue peak is one of the best at fluorescing some corals, there's so much more. In a moment, I'll share how we can actually create more of these fluorescent proteins within our corals or even alter them into totally different color morphs. But first, how do we use this spectrum and fluorescent information to highlight the best coloration with our LEDs? There are a few approaches to that. Turns out that broad blue spectrum to the coral's energy needs that we discussed last week will obviously now highlight a broad range of the coral's fluorescence as well. Missing or underrepresented peaks will result in reduced fluorescence and lack of coloration. An LED light source that naturally blends all of these individual peaks together for that broad blue peak and then scales them uniformly will meet both the metabolic needs of the coral and the coloration for us reefers. It's also the easiest approach, especially for basically everyone who doesn't own a spectrometer to check their work. One of the options which does that the easiest is the Kessel 360X, which is basically fixed that broad blue spectrum peak and won't even allow you to mess it up if you wanted to. Big part of the reason that I use these lights so often in my personal tanks. There is another approach more similar to what we did here today, an informed approach to adjusting the spectrum to the eye with a bit of intuition and experience, but based on your actual corals and their unique fluorescence. In this case, the more unique or discrete channels of specific spectrum peaks, the better. Control over individual spectrum peaks can be valuable because the best coloration is just as much about providing specific spectrum ranges as it is about the corals that you keep and their unique fluorescent proteins that they contain. Each LED option out there approaching fine tuning very differently. For instance, the MaxSpec Razor has four controllable channels, but one of them has the highest ratio of near UV and violet that I've seen in any popular reef LED module out there. One of the only modules where violet doesn't easily get washed out by the rest of the channels. However, because the metabolic effects associated with a heavy UV violet spectrum mix is not completely understood, I'd call this a pro level configuration and something we'll get to in just a moment. Again, the reason that we use the Radeon Blue for today's video is because of the eight unique controllable channels or 10 different peaks, but weighted to that blue or violet spectrum, I believe this is the most controls and opportunity to tweak any light out there and provides a pro level configuration. As I mentioned last week, I wouldn't buy a $20 T5 bulb without seeing the spectrum first and certainly not LED lights, which are much more expensive. Now you can start to see the why. If you care about how your corals fluoresce or look, the broad approach to blue spectrum is what that's all about. If the light that you're considering or already own is missing part of that peak, you're likely missing some of the coloration opportunity. This hits a third way to achieve better fluorescence with your LEDs and corals. If you want to add more violet to your LEDs, one of the lowest cost and likely best methods is just to supplement with some atinic T5s, which peak in that 420 violet range. The aquatic life fixture probably the best way to do that. In fact, with a pair of blue plus and a pair of true atinic bulbs, you can probably pair it with nearly any common reef LED out there of almost any price and achieve that broad blue spectrum that we're talking about. 
Reef Bright also makes a tinic strips which peak in that 450 range and seems to bring out some of the brightest fluorescence. These strips are most commonly used with T5 lights. Increasing this peak will increase the level of fluorescence versus the daylight lamps and used to provide that pop. They also have UV strip options and even options designed to bolt on to common LED modules. Okay, so before we get to how to use the light to promote the formation of new fluorescent color pigments or even color morphs, what about the coral's natural color pigments and the non-fluorescent proteins? So you notice that many of the corals in the tank look pretty drab under blue light alone, more or less just look like a pale blue extension of the rock. That's because the rock and these specific corals have very little fluorescence. They'll just look blue under blue light. That doesn't mean that they can't look awesome as well or maybe even better. In this case, the photosynthetic pigments and non-fluorescent reflective proteins are going to reflect the rest of the color, so when we add in the other spectrum ranges like green, yellow, orange, and red, the photosynthetic pigments and non-fluorescent reflective proteins reflect these wavelengths of color back at the eye, giving the coral a nice even look. Most notably, the cool white channel will bring up most of the tank's natural coloration because it's a combination of all those spectrums but other specific spectrum channels can accentuate specific corals if needed, but use them sparingly. You can see some of these examples where when we add in the other channels and balance out the light, the corals go from an indistinguishable blue to what might ultimately be some of the nicest looking corals in the tank. This is particularly true if most of the corals in your tank are not particularly fluorescent and actually look best when highlighted with a fuller spectrum approach. In relation to common LED channels, the best way to highlight that non-fluorescent coloration is just that cool white channel, add it in until the tank looks good to the eye, and then experiment with how the other colors blend in. I note that because we're not dealing with fluorescence now, similar to how the blue light makes non-fluorescent corals and the entire tank just look blue, green will make it look green, and red will make it red, and so on. However, nothing really pops under this light and very little fluoresces into a new wavelength or color, now we actually have to think about the color wheel and how different colors combine to make new colors as well. For instance, blue light and red light combine to make a purple tint or color to the eye. I do think it's critical to note that the metabolic value of two wavelengths of red and blue combined is nothing like the high energy wavelength of violet, it's just a purple tint to the tank. The red may bring out the reds in some corals, but it also may make some corals, algae, and dirtier areas of the tank appear more brown as well. The one thing that red does particularly well is highlight the red pigment in many fish, and I believe the biggest benefit to the red channel. In relation to that, most of the LED red channels out there peak in that 660 range, likely because that's where chlorophyll A peaks. That said, I personally believe the red channel is more about visual color representation than it is the photosynthetic needs of the coral, which is largely covered by that broad approach to the blue spectrum. I say that because ocean water will actually filter out much of the red light and the cool whites do offer spectrum that crosses that range. So a slightly different approach to red is Kessel's Peak around 640, which is an orange or red. This channel is particularly stunning with many types of antheas, which are often a hue between orange and red or a combination of both. The 640 channel can really make them stand out in ways that I've actually never seen before. Most of the other specific peaks like cyan, lime, green, and others are largely about coral representation to the eye. There's almost certainly some metabolic effects of peaking some of these specific spectrums too high. However, they're largely unknown and certainly far from universally agreed upon, so use them sparingly. I will say I've heard it from enough people to trust that I believe red spectrum specifically will bleach corals if used too high. I think the manufacturers have taken note here and scaled down the number of LEDs on many modules. I will say this is one of the downsides of tying that red channel in with other channels and why many high-end options keep it separate and discreet. Okay, now the big question of the day, how to use all this information to promote the formation of new fluorescent color pigments and color morphs, followed with how to keep that awesome coloration from the store you bought it from. There are four major factors which can contribute to color morphine and increased or decreased fluorescence. The first is what's known as photoconversion, which changes the spectrum wavelength the coral absorbs and in turn the fluorescence or color it emits as well. The most commonly believed range of light capable of achieving that is near UV to violet range, likely related to the intensity of the UV or violet spectrum, but also worth exploring is it related to simple exposure to low levels or even longer DLI photo periods to low levels as well? 
In either case, often changing green fluorescent proteins to red or even red to green. So if you've seen your corals change color like this, it may be why. How desirable that is depends on the particular coral. Similar to that is photoactivatable fluorescent proteins. These are those that convert from a non-fluorescent state to that pop or glow and fluorescence that we want from most corals. A variety of light in the visible spectrum range can cause this, but most commonly it's believed that increased exposure to an intensity of near UV and violet light will activate the fluorescent potential of photoactivatable fluorescent proteins. For as long as I've been in the hobby, reefers have been saying that atinic light, that light in that 420 violet range, doesn't just highlight fluorescence, but actually creates it. These anecdotal but also overwhelming reports over decades are very likely related to corals, which contain photoactivatable fluorescent proteins and the effects of photoconversion, particularly with intensity and photo period near the UV and violet channels of our reef tank lighting options. The next component of finding more fluorescence is encouraging higher concentrations of fluorescent proteins by increasing PAR beyond what the coral needs for metabolic function, at which point it's commonly believed the coral will increase the production of fluorescent proteins as a sunscreen or shade from the increased PAR. This is most related to SPS corals and Acropora in particular. While it is very likely the case that high PAR tanks will produce more fluorescence, it should be noted that overlighting the corals with the goal of coloration is often at odds with growth, and growth is often the most desired aspect in the first few years. Overlighting a coral to the point that it needs to protect itself from bleaching will cause the coral to intentionally slow down the rate of photosynthesis, reducing energy production, and in turn growth. So most often, overlighting with the intent of trying to encourage the coral to produce that protective fluorescent sunscreen is what I'd call the final frontier. Once all your frags have grown out, filled in the entire tank, and you've got a few years of reefing under your belt, go after perfecting coloration. I do think it's important to share that I believe an inexperienced reefer is about 10 times as likely to bleach and kill corals by overlighting them as they are to increase fluorescence. Overlighting corals requires serious attention to detail and ability to spot the health of specific corals. Not all corals will react well to this and likely you'll have to move some that don't adapt well. With super high PAR tanks, serious attention to flow is now critical as well. High flow is what's going to help the coral rid itself of all those unwanted oxidants and byproducts of the now rapid photosynthesis that will poison it. So achieving good flow in a high PAR tank is not just some random multiplier of tank size with two opposing pumps but attention to eliminating dead spots and getting very good flow throughout the entire tank, typically achieved with multiple pumps, often different types of pumps with specific goals. So what is high PAR? Well, that really depends on the coral, but our typical range for SPS is 200 to 350 PAR, which produces some pretty stunning tanks. The super high PAR tanks are often in that 350 to 600 range. If you can't tell already, unless you're a very experienced reefer intuitively connected to individual corals, I'd encourage reefers to not go after super high PAR tanks simply because the success rates for many corals will go down. But for those that do, the best results will be from doing it over a period of 6 to 12 months. Just a few percentage points a month taking pictures or video of the tank and corals monthly and reviewing the changes. Before we share how to keep that stunning coral coloration from the store and not let it fade or morph over time, the number one thing that promotes the best growth, coloration, overall health, and brings it all together is nothing good happens in a reef tank fast. So any change you make to spectrum or PAR should be done slow, best over many months, but ideally set it up right the first time and then just leave it alone. That is going to be the fastest and best path to the tank all of us want to achieve. The sliders on our LEDs are just adjustments to perfect a tool designed to support the metabolic health of an animal that relies on us for survival. So flipping these switches frequently will have a pretty undesirable effect on the health and in turn growth and coloration and even mortality rates. So what's best for both the corals and us reefers is set it up right the first time and forget it. I'd also like to touch on the potential additive elements that can change coloration in corals. Most of the additive brands out there have coloration bottles of some type. I think the one that's most well known directly for SPS coloration is Coral and Zucht. Most of the options sharing explicitly the color to expect from using it, like blues, pinks, and most notably green from iron. I think in any case, I believe some of these are very likely to bring out certain colors in an obvious manner and some more subtle. All this very likely attributable to only specific corals, which may or may not be in your tank, 
my best suggestion is try one at a time, take a photo or video and capture shots over three to four months or as long as the bottle lasts and see what colors develop. You can actually try stopping at one point and see if they fade as well. Most of us want undeniable proof that these things work, but honestly, we leave a lot of progress on the table if that's the only standard. Reefing is also a hobby where many of the most valuable lessons are also learned from exploring and sharing how elements like these work. It's fun and valuable to the entire community. Okay, so maybe the most important question of the day, how do we maintain that brilliant coloration and fluorescence from what we see at the store, shows like Reef of Palooza, a friend's tank or online shop, the answer may be fairly obvious by now. If you match the environment the coral came from, it will likely stay the same. The further you are from that environment where it developed that coloration, the lower the chances are that it will keep it. So that's actually more simple than it sounds. Ask the people that you bought the corals from how they grow them, most notably the type of light settings and photo peer they use. Most will share that openly and then try to emulate that the best you can. It's likely you can get pretty darn close. If the corals are collected or grown in an environment very different than your display tank, like a greenhouse with natural sunlight, collected wild under the sun on a reef or mariculture, or grown under 6500K halides, there's a very good chance they'll shift color under your predominantly blue reef tank lights. Might not be a huge shift, but I think it's fair to expect one. However, if they're grown under radions and you have radions at home, use their spectrum and PAR and light schedule, it's much more likely they'll maintain that same color. In fact, with acros in particular, I'll just say it, it's 10 times as likely to maintain the store-bought coloration with propagated corals with artificial lighting similar to display tanks versus wild collected corals or corals grown in greenhouses with natural sunlight as a primary illumination. For the most engaged, you may even want to maintain similar water chemistry as your favorite supplier like alkalinity. Similar water chemistry also means water quality matches spectral quality Fact is, water yellows from decaying organics in our tank. It not only reduces PAR by as much as 30%, but also filters out the blue light and changes spectrum. A small amount or a few bucks in carbon will return that water to pristine blue. These types of added efforts will make a world of difference. That said, it is fairly uncommon for a brilliantly colored coral to turn into brown town based on moving from one acceptable lighting option to another acceptable one. The color may shift, but if it was brilliant before, it'll often remain that in some form if you follow most of what we've shared in this series. Most often, shifting entirely from brilliant coloration to brown town is a result of setting up lighting catastrophically wrong, ignoring everything that we shared in this series, major chemistry swings and imbalances, but the number one cause is likely changing the light settings every month to try to correct for browning or even mortalities and missing the fact that these constant changes are actually the direct cause of the brown or dying corals. The next obvious question is par. What is the right par? How can I say what right is so confidently? And what are the best ways to achieve the right par in your tank? You don't want to miss this one because we're going to share some things that we've never shared before and how spread spectrum and par come together to master reef tank lighting. This playlist right here will change the way that you light your reef.